In today's video, we are diving into Terraform, one of the most popular tools for managing infrastructure as code. Whether you are working with AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, or on-prem, Terraform helps automate and manage infrastructure efficiently. By the end of this video, you will have a solid understanding of Terraform's architecture, key concepts, and best practices. Plus, we'll walk through a real-world Terraform example, so stick around for that. And let's dive in. In today's cloud infrastructure, you are working with resources like servers, databases, networks, and storage, all of which need to be created, managed, and scaled. Traditionally, you might handle this manually using your cloud provider's console or CLI. But as you can imagine, that process is time-consuming, error-prone, and almost impossible to track efficiently, especially when you are managing large environments or multiple cloud platforms. The problem is that manual infrastructure management doesn't scale well. As environments like development, staging, and production grow, it gets harder to ensure consistency. Even a small misconfiguration can cause major issues, and replicating your infrastructure across different regions or cloud providers becomes a real challenge. That's where Terraform steps in. Terraform lets you to define your infrastructure as code, which means instead of manually setting things up, you write your configuration files that describe exactly how your infrastructure should look like. Terraform then takes care of provisioning, updating, and even tearing down resources to match their desired state. The best part? Terraform is cloud agnostic. So whether you are working with AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud, you can use the same workflow. To understand how Terraform works, let's break down its three core components. Terraform core is the brain of the operation. It processes your configuration files and generates an execution plan, a blueprint of the infrastructure changes you want to make. Once ready, you can run commands like Terraform apply to create or modify resources. Providers are the plugin that allow Terraform to communicate with different cloud platforms like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. For instance, you can use the AWS provider to spin up an EC2 instance or the Azure provider to deploy a VM. Providers make Terraform cloud agnostic, enabling you to work across different platforms effortlessly. The state file is where Terraform keeps track of all the resources it manages. Each time you make changes, Terraform references the state file to know what exists and what needs to be updated. For larger environments, it's recommended to store this file remotely using backends like AWS S3 or HashiCorp console. Now, Terraform follows a straightforward but powerful workflow. First, you define your infrastructure in a configuration file using HashiCorp configuration language or HCL. For example, to create an EC2 instance on AWS, you might write like this. Next, you run the Terraform init to download the necessary provider plugins and set up your working environment. Use Terraform plan to generate a preview of the changes that will be made to your infrastructure. And this gives you a chance to review any additions or modifications before applying them. And once you are happy with the plan, run Terraform apply to provision the infrastructure. Terraform will execute the plan and update the state file to reflect the new or changed resources. Finally, you can inspect the infrastructure state using Terraform Show or Terraform State List to ensure everything is as expected. Inspecting the state regularly is important for keeping track of the changes and troubleshooting. Now, there are several tools out there for managing infrastructure, like AWS CloudFormation Template or Ansible. CloudFormation is AWS specific and helps to automate resources within AWS, while Ansible focuses on configuration management but both have limitations when it comes to managing complex multi-cloud environments. Unlike CloudFormation, which ties you to a single cloud provider, in this case AWS, Terraform is cloud agnostic, meaning it works seamlessly across AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and more. Plus, Terraform excels in state management, keeping track of what resources have been created, modified, or destroyed. And this gives you full control of your infrastructure and ensures consistency across environments. Now, Let's look at two important building blocks in Terraform, the resource block and the data block. Resource block is the foundation of the Terraform configurations. The resource block defines the specific infrastructure you want to create, like a virtual machine, database, or a storage bucket. For example, an AWS EC2 instance would look like this. The data block allows you to query existing infrastructure without managing it directly in Terraform. For example, if you want to reference an existing AMI in AWS, you would use a data block like this. These blocks give you the flexibility to manage and reference infrastructure seamlessly. Now, like any programming language, there are a few best practices to manage your infrastructure effectively. 
Instead of storing your state file locally, you should be using a remote backend like AWS S3 or Azure Storage. This allows you for better collaboration and scalability. Instead of building everything from scratch, use pre-built community models from Terraform Registry. This saves time and simplifies complex setups. And make sure your resources, variables, and outputs have consistent names. This helps with readability and long-term maintenance. Let's walk through a real-world example of a complete Terraform script. This configuration here sets up an EC2 instance, a security group, and retrieves an existing AMI using a data block. Here is a breakdown. The provider block specifies we are using AWS in the US West 2 region. The data block retrieves the most recent AMI from AWS based on specific criteria. The resource block for the security group allows HTTP traffic on port 80, which is common for web servers. And the EC2 instant resources uses the AMI we fetched and attaches the security group. Finally, the output block displays the public IP of the instance once it's created. By following best practices and using key blocks like resources, data, and output blocks, you can quickly deploy, manage, and scale your cloud infrastructure.